Hey, I'm Todd from Get Strong. This week's devotion comes from our reading. We have been reading in the Gospels for the last few weeks, and this past week we have been reading the last chapter of each Gospel and actually the beginning of Acts. And so we've been looking at the last words, the last interactions, the last moments that Christ has with his disciples. The most important one comes from Matthew 28. It's called the Great Commission where he, he's in Galilee and he gathers all his disciples up and he's given them some final instructions. And so before I read it to you, I want you to know that he's talking to you. And so if you are a believer in Christ, then this commandment, this commissioning, this challenge is written to you, not just to the men and, and women that are on that mountainside that day, but he's, he's talking to you. So I want you to hear it from that perspective as I read. So this is what it says. Matthew 28 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded them. And you remember, I am with you always to the end of of the age. So let's start with what does it mean to make disciples? And so just generally speaking, I believe uh, just, just a simple picture of making disciples is like an umbrella. This term make disciples is like an umbrella. And underneath that umbrella is everything including evangelism starting from knowing nothing about God, never hearing the name of Jesus all the way through growing until you have a relationship with him and, and then continuing on growing as a Christian and a believer until you are a completely mature, fully developed follower of Jesus Christ, right? So it's everything along this line. All of that is making discipleships. Now, some people split it up and say evangelism is everything before salvation and discipleship is from salvation forward. We don't want to get into all the details of that today. All we need to know is that it's we have been called to make disciples. And I believe that just means in your role, wherever you are, that is helping individuals take a step along that pathway. Now you may help somebody take a big chunk of that or you may just help somebody take one step in a thousand step journey, right? So I heard it described this way that uh, uh, when asked, a, guy, a pastor named Tommy Nelson was asked, what does a disciple look like? And this is what he said. He says, I want to be able to take a guy and give him a toothbrush and a Bible and drop him off in a helicopter out in the middle of nowhere. And so if I were to come back a year later looking for him, right in the place where I dropped him off, I would expect to see a thriving community of believers because that disciple made an impact. Now that's, that's extreme, right? But the principle is very true. I believe that God expects each one of us to make disciples. And I believe that he has planted us within our circle of influence. Now, everybody's circle is different. Yours may be a few people. Others may be thousands of people, maybe a whole country. But wherever you are, wherever God has put you, I want to encourage you to take ownership of it, to say, this is my ministry field. This is is where I'm going to give my best to God and I'm going to make disciples where God has put me. Now that may be at the gym. You may be uh, in the, uh, the 5 a.m. class where people are still asleep in the morning. But whatever it is, that is your place. Maybe it's, your, it's where you work or it is in your neighborhood. My wife loves to gather ladies from our neighborhood. She has a big she gets on the community Facebook group and advertises studies and stuff all the time trying to bring people in just so that she can help encourage them, bless them, strengthen them, walk with them. Whatever your circle is, I want you to take ownership of it. And I don't want to intimidate you to think that you've got to have a seminary degree. This passage says to teach them everything I have commanded you. So whatever it is you already know, Teach that to somebody else, even if it's just sharing your testimony. Even the, the blind man that Jesus saved, we read about it recently. He says, I don't, they ask him who did this. They ask him what happened. He said, I don't know. 
He says, all I know is I was blind, but now I see, right? And tons of people were drawn to Jesus because this guy said, hey, I used to be blind, but now I see. And that's true of us. We used to be lost, but now we're found. We used to have no hope, but now we walk with Jesus. And so just learn to tell your story. Learn to tell them how you found Jesus. Learn to help them grow in their walk as you are growing in your walk. And so there's a lot of different ways. If you need help with any of this, we've got great resources in, in, the, in the section below, below this video. We have, we have resources on GetStrongMinistries.com where we can help you grow. We can help you help others grow. Whatever it is you're, you need to make disciples and to take ownership of the place where God has placed you, I want to encourage you to do that. We want to come alongside you. We want to help you. The big deal is for you to take ownership and to say, yes, I will walk with God. And walking with God is not just being a good person, trying to be a good person, but it is being on mission with God. One of my favorite uh, uh, slogans or purpose statements comes from the Navigator. I've got a, a, a coffee mug on my desk that says, uh, to know him and to make him known. I think that's what we're here for. I am to strive to know him more and more and more every day. But at the same time, I'm supposed to do my best to make him known. Because there are people in our communities that do not know Jesus. Some have never even heard the name of Jesus. Let's not, not let that happen on our watch. Let's let everybody in our circle know the name of Jesus and how to have a relationship with him. So go and make disciples. Have a great day.